So I came across this really scary video about where a guy goes down to a beach in California and it just sets off his radiation alarm, which must mean that this Californian beach is contaminated. Here we go, up over 100 now. I just walked back to the beach. And so the width of the sand and pretty much the length of this particular beach looks like it's contaminated with radiation from the Fukushima meltdown, no less. I mean, where else could this radiation be coming from? I mean, it's not like you can get 30 times the background on an airplane, or that there are places on Earth with about 100 times the average terrestrial background radiation. And this video has the best part of a million hits. Now, even if I didn't know quite a lot about the geology of America, I would have still been instantly skeptical about this one. Look, Greenpeace hates nuclear power with a passion. Well, thanks for that, Greenpeace. However, the people who design these reactors are not idiots, nor are they free from such concerns, which is why the US government tested the walls they were going to use in these nuclear reactors by firing a jet into one of them at about 500 miles per hour. The plane atomized with the impact. It just disappeared into dust. Only the tips of the wings escaped total destruction. But the wall designed to move and absorb energy did its job well. Yeah, maybe Greenpeace should title their commercial aircraft disasters. Do you really want to get in a plane again? Anyway, like I was saying, other than that is just bloody impressive. Greenpeace hates nuclear power with a passion. And this is their radiation map of Fukushima. And even with the worst spread of the local radiation, you're down to about three times the background radiation by the time you're only 50 miles away from the reactor. So what is it exactly that makes this guy think that a nuclear disaster, which is actually pretty difficult to detect when you get 100 miles away from it, will all of a sudden be very easy to detect when you're over 5,000 miles away from it? But why is the radiation higher on this beach here? And why does the radiation level actually go down when he gets nearer the water, especially if he thinks that the radiation is in the water? It's actually all fairly simple. I mean, if you've kept up with the creationist radiation halos bullshit, you would know that most of those come from the Yosemite Pluton, which is basically a massive hunk of granite, which is part of an even larger hunk of granite called the Sierra Nevada Batholith, which makes up these mountains here in Eastern California. Now, those radiation halos are there because there's actually quite a lot of radiation in those rocks, relatively speaking. You know, stuff like uranium and thorium. I mean, damn, they used to mine uranium in both California and Oregon. Now, if you know a little bit about how geological reworking happens, you'll know that this stuff can get washed down rivers and that it can end up on beaches where the forces of gravitational sorting and the waves and such like can get you enrichment of this sort of thing. I mean, take a guess. Where do you think the most naturally radioactive place on Earth is? <laughs> yep, you guessed it. It's a beach. In Brazil, as it happens, which coincidentally has a radiation level comparable to the exclusion zone around Fukushima. Now, I actually know something about the West Coast beaches because I used to fly my remote control planes there. Now, these motors actually have really strong magnets in them, and some of the sand there is black and magnetic, and that got into the motors and actually caused the motor to seize and caused this crash. So this is what a normal motor should sound like, yeah? And this is what the motor sounds like on the one that crashed. And if you actually look in into the motor, what you actually find is it's coated with black sand and you can't wash it off to save your life, it's magnetic black sand. And black sand, you'll be happy to know, is well known for having elements like thorium in it. Now, with that in mind, let's take a look at our intrepid hero with the Geiger counter one more time. You 
you see it's still reading. Maybe a little higher, but that's hard to quantify. I'm on the beach. Well, yeah, when he walks over the black sand, the values go up, because that's probably where the radiation is coming from. And then, when he goes out towards the ocean, the level goes down. I'm going to walk to the water's edge, and you're going to see the numbers go down as I get closer to the water. I'm down here right at the water line. It's going back to 50, 40. And the radiation goes down because the radiation isn't coming from the water. Indeed, the water is providing enhanced shielding from the radiation in the sand. And then, of course, when he gets off the beach, he's away from the black sand and the radiation levels go down even further. Um, one last video. Here's, here's the roadway coming from the beach. And you see, the numbers are down in the 30s. Now, if this were me, I would have been all over that beach with that Geiger counter till I found out exactly where this radiation was coming from. Sadly, however, I wasn't. However, others have actually claimed to have gone to this beach with some very sensitive radiation detection gear. You see, different isotopes decay giving off different amounts of energy. So if you can detect the amount of energy being given off, you can actually identify which radioisotopes are present. If it's leaked radiation from Fukushima, you would expect to find isotopes like iodine-131, cesium-137, and strontium-90, you know, the fission products from a nuclear reactor. Radioisotopes that really don't occur in any significant amount in nature, which means that you can detect incredibly small amounts of them. However, if it's just the natural background radiation of the beach, you would expect to find things like thorium and uranium. And guess what? Surprise, surprise, the natural background radiation on the beach is mostly thorium. Look, there are real dangers to radiation, just like there are real dangers to drinking, smoking, eating, driving, and owning guns. But for pity's sake, keep them in perspective. Radiation is just a fraction of the boogeyman that driving is. I mean, 30,000 people die every year on the roads in America. No god since the time of the Aztecs has demanded the blood sacrifice of humans on such a scale. But oddly enough, that in no way discourages me from taking a road trip in the US, any more than the enhanced radiation from the Yosemite Pluton would discourage me from taking in the beauty of such a place.